With both side assemblies glued up, now it's time to connect them together and put the front and the rear rail in place. In order to get this piece to, to, to set on the bench a little more level, I'm just going to use a couple of 2 by 4s I'll put them underneath the legs. Now I've got a nice level surface and I have plenty of access to the bottom of the leg assembly so that I can go ahead and put some clamps there, squeeze the whole thing together. So now I'll install the front and rear rails in place. And again, at this point, normally the cleats would already be glued on here. So you'd have a really good indicator of what the top inside face was. But again, I can always reference the little dot system there. Single dot is telling me that that's the top outside face of the front. So again, glue, because it's a structural joint, and put into the leg. Here's my two dots, so that's up and out. Well, there's no way to do it that way, so it must be up and out this way. Again, I look at this, my dots are up and towards the outside of the chair. If I'm sitting right here, that's definitely the outside, so I'm oriented properly. With those glued in place, Get some glue on these, and I lower the entire assembly on. Clamp holds that in place. And what I want to do again is look to make sure I don't have any racking. Correct that. That looks good. And there's one more step that I want to do to make sure that these are even. The last step is I want to make sure that the distance from the bottom of the leg to the bottom of the rear rail, from the bottom of the front leg to the bottom of the front rail, I want to make sure that these are both in the same plane. So I put a block against the bottom of the leg, and I use that block to give myself a definitive straight edge. The bottom of the leg is eased so that it doesn't catch on carpet or flooring and splitter, but the the very bottom is still flat. This gives me a nice straight true edge and I can measure the distance there. In this case it's six and a half inches. I can go up to the top, do the exact same thing, and again I'm at six and a half inches. This tells me that this is in here nice and square and even I can go ahead and really tighten this clamp down now. Again, you might want to use pads on here, that way you don't dent the wood. White oak is pretty strong, so it's tough to dent it, but if you're building a chair in cherry or walnut, those fibers tend to crush a lot easier. You repeat the process on the front leg. If those measurements are the same, you tighten that down. Now, there's a lot of weight that you're lifting and suspending here, so if you have an extra set of hands, a uh, spouse, child, partner that can just 
help support that weight while you're working with the clamps, it can't hurt. Again, really familiarize yourself with this process.